Hello, this is Jordan. So this is a little bit of a different style video than what we have been showing. Um, I'm usually the one editing these videos, but uh, I did the the history of the Britanniaville Manor video. I uh, just did my voice, but uh, I thought what I'd do this time is walk through one of the, the challenges of living in a house like this, um, specifically plumbing or bathroom related. Uh, most people uh, probably just maybe take it for granted or don't quite realize uh, the challenges that you can be faced with living in a home that's this old that's probably gone through multiple iterations of bathrooms at this point. Uh, being that the house was built in the late 1800s, there was no indoor plumbing back then, so the house wasn't really outfitted for it. So I'm, I'm pretty sure our current master bathroom was a closet if I'm honest. So this house has four bathrooms, um, full bathrooms and one half. So five total bathrooms of those four bathrooms. One was a shower, um, with no curtain by the way. Um, and then three were tubs of those three tubs. One had jets, which was relatively newer. Um, I think that bathroom had been remodeled at one point. Um, and, and it didn't originally have a, a bathtub or a shower in it. I think it was just a, 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 a half bath. So the one with the shower, which also looked relatively new, um, was the farthest from the bedrooms. Uh, it was actually about 10 feet from the front door. So it's, it's quite a distance away. And we had, it was one of the first things I did when we, when we moved here was put up a ring so that we could take showers because you know we're we're coming from a house with showers versus what we have now so so um i don't know about you but um i haven't taken a bath in oh, over 20 years it's not something i'm i really care to do um so we had to do something about that um, back in 2009 uh, we received a couple different renovation estimates so this is the first full year that we've been here uh, and we got renovation estimates for two of the bathrooms the one with the shower to get that redone and then also the master bedroom knowing that that was one of the areas that we wanted to address first um, we even purchased at the time a bunch of new antique style fixtures something that would match sort of the 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 flow and the style of the house so they were new fixtures they were just old styles uh, but the, the estimates, the quotes we were getting from the uh, home renovators were a bit more than we were expecting, uh, a bit more than we were hoping. The cheapest was like 12900 which, you know, looking back, it's really not that bad. But at the time, we bought our all, all of our own fixtures um, just to have sort of a shower installed versus having a bathtub and then installing things like a vanity. That, that seemed high at the time. Um, so we decided to, to not do that because we made that decision the the issue we ran into immediately was the fact that the tubs use what's called a standing waste system and this isn't um this isn't new technology this is pretty old stuff and and these systems when um when restored sell for over three thousand dollars so they're they're not things that people just throw away or should throw away because um, they're sought after they're they're hard to find the what a standing waste system is is the the plumbing sits externally of the bathtub and you'll see these a lot with clawfoot tubs for example they're they're on the outside our tub spout inside the bathtub is called an elephant trunk style um, and that elephant trunk doesn't use the same standard size piping that a normal tub spout would use nowadays um, so that meant finding a tub spout that has a diverter, one where we could change it to a shower as well as a regular tub spout, uh, became impossible because you know not only most diverters built inside walls where you don't see them, um, the ones that are externally facing don't don't run this pipe size pattern. So they were basically impossible to find. Um, I looked everywhere. Um, you you you're basically hoping to find one at some antique shop when you go that's what it boiled down to so they they weren't sold on ebay there was there was nothing on the internet that i could find 
So we were kind of left in this tricky position. So we started searching around and I actually found an antique plumber, a guy that only specializes in old style plumbing. Uh, this guy's name's Walter and he's a bit of an eccentric fellow. Um, he had a diverter that fit that pipe uh, that was built, I think, in the 40s or 50s, he said, um, that he came out of an old hotel in New Hampshire that they had done a renovation. So he actually said that he had like a pallet full of old um, antique plumbing fixtures, and that included some of these. And he said he just grabbed the nicest one that he had of that batch, and he brought them to our house. He also brought a D-ring to put on the wall. Um, he fixed some of the, the valves because it's an old-style valve. He actually used... Uh, instead of like O-rings, they used old uh, fabric, for example, and they they stitched and he showed me. So I I I walked I watched him do it. I worked with him doing it. He actually had to use a Dremel to kind of resize the pipe a bit to get it to fit. Uh, so I watched him put it all together with the anticipation that hey, we've got another bathroom to do at some point in the future. So to do all of this, parts and labor, it cost us two thousand dollars, which you know that's that's quite a bit because ultimately we're just changing a spout, right? Um, but he got it. He gave us a D ring and he gave us a, the pipe, this, the riser for the shower head and all that. So that's fine. $2,000. Um, the downstairs tub at the time, the ones with the jet, uh, the jets was a newer sort of jacuzzi style tub, but he, the original owner, uh, of the house, the previous owner of the house had blocked off the tub spout and he installed like a sink faucet as its spout, which is, and it was kind of jerry-rigged. They actually had like the, the nut on the bottom was made of like whittled wood. Like it was it was all funny looking and it took me a long time to take it all apart because he had the way he had it positioned. So, but because that was newer, um, I was able to find um, fixtures that were just standard pipe fitting sizes. That was a much easier thing to put together. Um, that, that gave us two full size showers and then the much smaller shower closest to the front door so now we had three showers but two of them were on the first floor and then one was in the master bedroom now my daughters are getting older and i knew that at some point when they're teenagers i'm going to you know i'm going to have a hard time giving them all free range in my bathroom uh, i'm going to lose all privacy and they're going to want their own privacy and, and i know Teenage girls tend to take a long time in bathrooms, so they're going to want their own stand-up shower in their own bathroom uh, that they're sharing. So that kind of left us in the position of having to put in a diverter in that other upstairs bathroom. So I reached out to Walter, our antique plumber uh, friend again, and, and asked him to, if he would install another one of these diverter spouts. Um, and he didn't answer his phone, uh, so I texted him, and then he didn't respond to my text. And then, you know, months go by, and I text him again, and he doesn't respond. I try calling him. He's just completely ignoring me. So I went on to his, his uh, Facebook and his website, and I emailed him, and then I messaged him on Facebook. And he's at this point, he's just completely ghosting me. So that... Uh, that eliminated him as a possibility to to find this. So I scoured the internet. I looked everywhere I possibly could to find uh, this tub spout uh, elephant trunk style diverter that will fit that standing waste pipe. It's a much larger pipe than a, than a standard diverter. Um, I could not find one. In fact, all I found were other people like myself looking for this thing. I, I had gotten patent numbers off of the original. Uh, I looked everywhere. Um, in my search, I found a company in California that will take your tub spot if you ship it to them. And what they wind up doing is they sort of cobble together a stand-up riser shower out of it. Um, so I was like, oh, jackpot. That, we'll do that. So I emailed them and I, I asked them to, to give me an idea of what this would run. And they wanted $3,500 to start. Uh, I'd have to ship them my tub spout and and they would put it all together um, and send it back for $3,500 without shipping. Um, and then I still wouldn't have the D-ring and, and, and many of the other stuff. And I would still have to install it myself. So that wasn't something I, I really wanted to have as an expense. $3,500 is not cheap. So 
but their website had pictures of what they would put together and it, it basically just looked like they took the tub spout and they turned it upside down and then they had uh, a pipe put on the bottom of where the tub spout was and connected to a riser. Uh, and then in the middle of the joint, they had sort of like this valve, almost like a, a hose valve or something like that, but a, a decorative one, like a nice one. So I thought, well, why, why don't I just try to do that myself? Maybe, maybe I can put it together myself um, for cheaper than $3,500. So I started pricing this stuff out. Um, I found a guy on Craigslist who would uh, weld it. Um, so I showed him pictures of what I was thinking. I bought a pipe at uh, the hardware store. I went there with the tub spot. I made sure it was the right diameter. I had a threaded rod on the other end. And I showed uh, this welder what I was thinking of doing. He said, yeah, sure, bring it over. So I, I watched him weld it. He showed me what he was doing, put it all together. He charged me $200. Uh, so now I have this tub spout with a pipe welded to it. Then I found uh, a riser with a, an adapter that would um, connect to that uh, size threaded rod. Um, and I started cobbling together those parts. I went to a website called Signature Hardware to purchase the shower riser and the support bar that attaches to the wall. And that wound up running me $290. Um, then I brought the tub spout with the pipe and I had it chromed. I found a chromer in Rhode Island and they do a lot of car parts and boat parts and well, they they took that welded part and they chromed it. So now I had a chromed tub spout and that cost me about $180. So altogether, uh, it was about $670 for the riser, the tub spout, the welding, and the chrome. $670 all in. And then if you count like the putty, for example, um, and then I bought it like a filter for the shower head, um, you're closer to $700. Now, it didn't include the D-ring, but neither did the $3,500 quote from the company in California um, or the shower curtain or anything like that. So we had we had to purchase all that separately, and that's fine. But for getting a stand-up shower in a house that was built in the late 1800s um, isn't cheap no matter what you do. So you put it all together, and you end up with about $700 worth of um, time and effort. Uh, and, and I think it works great.